Hi, welcome to YouTube channel Unlock Layout and Design. Today we are going to discuss about semiconductor resistors. This is part one of a lengthy lecture. In CMOS VLSI processors, we have digital and analog processors. In digital process, we have BMOS and NMOS transistors. For example, I take an inverter, it is made up of PMOS transistor and NMOS transistor. If I take a AND gate or a NAND gate, so I have PMOS transistors and again NMOS transistors. Whereas when we look into the analog system, analog process, we have a PMOS transistor, NMOS transistor, and in addition, we have passive elements, the resistors and the capacitors. So in this lecture, we'll be speaking about resistors and in subsequent lectures, we'll be speaking about capacitors and inductors. Inductors are predominantly used in RF processes. Yeah, let's discuss about resistor. What is a resistor? Resistor is a circuit element that opposes the flow of current. Suppose I have a resistor R, which is uh, uh, exposed to a voltage V and then a current I starts flowing. Suppose so. Uh, suppose when we apply a voltage V, a current I flows as per the equation V is proportional to I or V by I is always a constant or uh, that constant is nothing but the resistance of the material. So the unit of the resistance is like ohms and this is the symbol of resistor. So one important point is whenever a current flows in the resistor, it is nothing but a power dissipation and that power dissipation is given by I squared R and this power is nothing but heat and this is a loss. So let's now look into the off chip and on chip resistors. We are all familiar with the off chip resistor which is a through hole component and also on PCBs we would have seen surface mounted resistors or surface mounted devices. But when it comes to an on chip resistor, the resistance is formed by the gate of the transistor which is nothing but a material called polysilicon which is also called as poly. Okay, so now in a PDK or a process design kit, we will have lots of types of resistors. Okay, so how do I choose which uh, resistor is important or useful for my design? So for example, uh, if I want to buy a car, I just go and find out based on some specifications, I make a choice. For example, is the petrol car or a diesel car? Uh, what is the cost of the car? What is the mileage of the car? What is the ground clearance, etc. Similarly, when I choose a resistor for on-chip use, I will go and look into the figures of merit. For example, they are the most important figures of merit are accuracy, density, temperature coefficient and voltage coefficient. We will discuss all of these figures of merit in detail. The first figure of merit that we are going to discuss is accuracy. So what is accuracy? Accuracy, we would have seen the off chip, the through hole resistors, they all come with some color code and this color code actually represents the accuracy or the tolerance. For example, some resistors may have 1%, 2%, 5% or 10% of accuracy. As I told you, poly is the material which is used for on-chip resistor. These poly resistors have very bad accuracy. Typically, it's around 20%. Some processes offer 15 and some processes have like even higher like 25 to 30% of variation. What does this imply actually? Suppose I fabricate a resistor R which has a value of say assume 10 kilo ohms. With 20% of uh, accuracy, the resistance can go as high as like 12 kilo ohm or it can go as low as 8 kilo ohm. So now this is a challenge that we need to address. So how do we address this challenge? We would have seen some amplifiers like this wherein the gain is given by V out by V in is equal to RF by RN. Let's assume RF is like 10 kilo ohms. 
and R in is 1 kilo ohm. So, what is the gain? Gain is 10. Now, let us assume these are polyresistors and have like 20% variation. So, RF increased from 10 kilo ohm to 12 kilo ohm and R in changed from 1 kilo ohm by 20% that became 1.2 kilo ohm. Now, what is the gain after this variation? It still remains to be 10 which matches with the earlier uh, number. So, this way I am taking the ratio of resistors and then eliminating the error of variation in the uh, resistors. So, now what is very important is we have to match this RF and R in in order to get proper gain. So, we will discuss about resistor matching in subsequent videos. So, the next figure of merit is density. What do you mean by density? Density is resistance per unit area. Suppose I have like 10 kilo ohm of resistance in some 10 micrometer square. So, this is nothing but the density. So, why is this important? For example, if I have very poor density, that means to say that if I want to build a 10 kilo ohm, I need a big area. So, that means in semiconductor area is equal to cost. So, the cost of the IC goes up as and when the area is increased. So, now if I want a big resistance, first of all, why do I need a big resistance? Suppose I apply 1 volt across a 1 kilo ohm resistor. What is the current that flows inside this? is V by I, V by R is equal to I. That is nothing but 1 volt divided by 1 K that is 1 milliamp. So, 1 milliamp is a lot of current and the battery will go down very soon, especially in a handheld or a mobile device, the power drains away very fast. So, for that reason, I will increase my resistance so that the power consumption goes slow. But area increase will increase the cost. So, for that reason, we need to have very high density of resistors in order to save the cost and also save the power. So, let us introduce a parameter called sheet resistance which is given by ohms per square. Suppose I have a material in VLSI processes, all materials are very very thin. So, if I know the resistance of this material for a small area, say a small area like this, which is 1 micrometer by 1 micrometer, I can find out the resistance of this entire material having width W and length of this material. So, suppose if I know the uh, resistance of 1 mi micrometer by 1 micrometer, suppose say I have that value as 1 kilo ohm, then for me if I have the material of 2 micrometer by 1 micrometer, I can think that it is a series connection of 2 such resistors having 1k and 1k. So, the equivalent resistance will become 2 kilo ohms. Suppose I have width of 2 micrometer and length of only 1 micrometer, I can think that they are two resistors connected in parallel. So, that resistance will become 0.5 kilo ohm. Basically, if I know the sheet resistance, I can just multiply it by the length and the width and find out the resistance of that dimension. So, suppose say I have R sheet or sheet resistance of 100 ohms. So, if I want to find out the resistance of this material which is having a sheet resistance of 100 ohms, what should I do? Suppose this uh, the length of that material is 10 micrometer and width is 1 micrometer. Then how do I find out the sheet resistance of this material? So, resistance of that material is nothing but R sheet into L divided by W so many ohms. In our case it is 100 into 10 micrometer divided by 1 micrometer which is nothing but 1000 ohms or 
one kilo. This is the way we find out the resistance of a material by knowing the sheet resistance. The next important figure of merit is temperature coefficient. Suppose at 27 degrees centigrade, the resistance of a material uh, resistor is like 1 kilo ohm and at 100 degrees, again it is 1 kilo ohm, then it doesn't have any temperature coefficient. So the resistance is the same at any temperature, but majority of the resistors have some temperature coefficient and it, if it is like 1 kilo ohm at uh, 27 uh, degree centigrade, it will not be 1 kilo ohm at 100 degree centigrade, it could be like 1.2 kilo ohm. So then we say that it has got a temperature coefficient which is positive. Some resistors even have a negative temperature coefficient. In that case, maybe it could be like 0.8 kilo ohm at some higher temperatures. So it can have positive or negative temperature coefficient. And this temperature coefficient can be linear or it could be a square, square law kind of a system. So what is linear? Whenever it follows a curve like this, which is of the form y is equal to mx then we say it is like linear but if it follows the equation something like this where y is equal to x square then it is a square law behavior generally resistors will have like a combination of both it will have a linear portion up to certain temperature and it will have a non-linear after that so anyway the non-linear is like very less for lesser values of x and then it suddenly increases for higher values of x. So we'll also discuss something known as the voltage coefficient. So let's try to understand what is this voltage coefficient. Suppose I have a resistor R which is equal to 1 kilo ohm. I apply a voltage of 1 volt at 1 so then the resistance is like 1 kilo ohm suppose i apply a 2 volt across the same resistor r is equal to 1 kilo ohm then because of this higher applied voltage this resistance will not be 1 kilo ohm it will become say 1.1 kilo ohm then we say that it has got a positive voltage coefficient suppose say if i this is the applied voltage across it and this is the resistance so then it can change to a higher value or it can change to a lesser value and if it is not a constant value like this then we say that it has got like voltage coefficient normally resistors that are formed in a n well generally have higher values of voltage coefficient polyresistors don't have very high voltage coefficient okay so to summarize the uh, the uh, figures of merit uh, like the sheet resistance temperature coefficient and the voltage coefficient we have different types of as i told you earlier we will have different types of resistors in uh, our PDK. So this one is a N plus poly, this is a P plus poly, N plus diffusion, P plus diffusion and a N well resistor. So let's uh, see the sheet resistances. So the sheet resistances of these different uh, resistors are totally different. For example, N plus poly has 100, P plus poly 180 ohms per square, P, N plus diffusion 50, P plus uh, diffusion has 100, whereas the N well resistance has got a higher sheet resistance and it has got a 1 kilo ohm of sheet resistance. Now let's come to the temperature coefficient of this resistors. N plus poly has got 800 ppm per degree centigrade with a negative sign. That means to say that with temperature the resistance is going to go down. Whereas a P plus poly has got a positive temperature coefficient and it goes up with respect to temperature. And these have a higher uh, temperature coefficient and n well resistor has got a negative temperature coefficient of 1500 ppm per degree centigrade. So the next figure of merit that we discussed is the voltage coefficient. We see that this is not a big number 
it has got all of them have got a positive voltage coefficient and nvel resistor has got a very high voltage coefficient as we discussed earlier so this is about the different figures of merit of a resistor so in subsequent uh, uh, lectures we will discuss about the matching of the resistors and some circuits to see some attenuator circuits and etc so this is about the uh, resistors their figures of merit thanks for watching this video and if you have uh, liked the uh, video please hit the like button share and subscribe and if you have any queries please post them in the comment section thank you